Oh, he loves making Christmas vacation jokes. <laughs> Except you Mayor guys want to be the Todd and Marco, not the I know, Clarks. I'm the Todd and Marco. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be the Griswolds. I'm the Marco. <laughs> You're the Marco. The Marco doesn't have people over to their house. See, this is what I love about our family. Our family is filled with Todds and Margos. It's only, really. <laughs> it's really only Todds. Although some of them think they're the Griswolds, but they're definitely the Todds and Margos. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. like, no, 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 no. I want to I want to be alone and have a romantic Christmas. Uh yeah, either it's either it's like a combination of Todd and Margo and Cousin Eddie and his wife. Yes. Like, it's like a mixture yeah. yes. of those two. Jitters full. <laughs> <laughs> and my expensive toilet. <laughs> mm. Especially you saying this with I'm a fur as, coat oh my God. on. I look Natalie like the woman has. at the end. I look like, oh my God. Did, uh, his wife. Bill Murray's brother's his wife. wife. <laughs> yes, oh my God, you do. You I look just you know like her. Shit. You oh, are, shit. oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> he was large and beastly. Dude, you and Henry should go as like That's pretty fun. As Bill Murray's tied brother up. tied up yeah. as a present and you dress like this. That would be a perfect couple's costume. Like, guys, oh my god. On I this. can't believe I look exactly you like that look woman. Just like her. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe this is only coming from two people that have to watch National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation at least twice every year. If you're not a vacation fan, this entire beginning sucks for just you. Just sucks. You just don't. Like, you don't you're care. Like, oh, great. Characters from a movie I've never seen. But cool. I will say, maybe this is the year, maybe this is the the calling for you to watch you, I mean, National Lampoon's really Christmas should. Vacation. It's the best one. That or Scrooge are the best ones. Yes. yes. So just... Do it. Not that we're, I mean, we're not being Mariah's over here. We're not trying to put the Christmas on you too early. I mean, it's it, it's close on to Thanksgiving. I think it's time, everyone. You think it's time? It's time. Turkeys just went on sale. Didn't Mariah already do her opening Christmas entrance? She defrosted. Yeah. yeah. She defrosts the night of Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> which I swear she st stole this joke from me. I think she listens to page seven. I think she knows that I well, say her specifically. And Ariana. Yes, say. Uh, oh, yeah. All the greats mm. listen to page seven. And yeah. you should be listening to page seven as well. I believe and it. And I've been saying that they defrost Mariah Carey for Christmas for like eight years. And this year she literally was inside of a block of ice and they defrosted her for Christmas. I love it. <laughs> So, Mariah, thank you for listening. I'm also a really <laughs> big fan. And uh, yes, I'll be in your next music video. Oh, as Cassian. As Cassian! Oh my God, who I'm dressed as right now. And I gotta say, remember when that, like, the snap filter was in when, like, it would, like, change yeah. your face to make it look, you know, like, in more angular or more round? And yes. I took a picture of myself and I was like, I'd fuck me. I mean, I'd already fuck me. But now it especially fuck me. But I will say, I look a little dirty. You look, I mean, you are, you do, you make a good mask character. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I've done that filter and I look exactly like my brother, so it's gross. But you don't um, look like your brother. No, I don't look anything like my brother. So then that's fine for you. Right, I Natalie? Look like my bro I look like my brother with, a, like, lipstick on, basically, so. Well, your brother is in a very, they're very attractive men. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you heard it here first. I'm going to marry into, back into Natalie's family. Weird. That would be, a, like, a weird combination. Uh, I mean, they do it on those sister shows. Oh, like that's the true. Extreme sister when they marry brothers. And or like the twins that marry twins. Twins that marry twins. Oof, I don't know about that. And then they have babies at the same time. Yeah, that freaks me out. Whoa. You know what? Good for them. Do you think they tag out? Why am I out? judging? Do you think like they definitely do like a, I'm not Kevin tonight? Well, they, they tease that when they get on those docks. They're sort of like, I don't know if it's just for the salacious nature of television, but they do kind of go like, sometimes I can't tell which one it is. Ooh. But you think if that were, like, if that happened in reality, that you would never joke about it. I feel like they would take it very seriously. Well, especially if the other person didn't know Whoa. it was the other. That's not Whoa. consensual. Oh, no, it's okay? not. Okay. 
Kind of um, hot, though. I'm kinda dressed hot. as Amryn in the meeting because she's like draped in this thick gray fur coat, which I have, um, that I now look like the woman from Christmas Vacation. But it's, yes, this is my grandmother's do. faux uh, fur and it, her initials. What is his name? She was like, when she was like, Harold, you did it. You didn't take away the Christmas <sighs> bonuses. My grandma's initials are it, stitched in here. Sick. Yeah. Um, what are their names? Wait, I got to find out now. <laughs> Helen. Helen Shirley. Yes. Frank, you didn't. There you well, go. Well, of all the low down awful things, I changed my mind. All right, guys, wow. this is not a Christmas vacation. I'll put it on the reel. <laughs> I will act out the entire end scene of the movie. I was transfixed. Thank you. I, I was lost in your art, and I just want to say thank you for sharing it with us. You're welcome. <laughs> But you do look like you'd run over an orphan. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Actually, when I did that Roommates Are Friends sketch with you like eight years ago, I was wearing Scrape this jacket. Scrape them off, Claire. Scrape them off, Claire. You want to save somebody? Save, save yourself. yourself. That's a quote from Scrooge. Man, we are already, we are not in the Christmas <laughs> season yet. All right, I'm taking this jacket off while, for the time being. Oh, it is, is it really huh? warm? Yeah. <laughs> it works good but as I a like jacket. But I like you're still Amarin underneath. Like, you didn't just, like, rely on just the coat. I can't do that. No, that would be too much. I'm more than Not me, coats. because I realized after I got here, I mean, I can take the bat wings off, but I will say I am going to go to the grocery store dressed like this. I mean... I think people will like it. You think so? I think I, you should leave the wings on. I think that I, I bet you one person in there will recognize you as Cassian. Do you think so? Yeah. Maybe I'll walk around posturing. Yeah, he strut. <laughs> you go, hey, hey, everybody, can I buy an orange? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna ask everyone in the store if you can Could buy I one buy orange. Buy one orange, <laughs> and they'll start just keep asking that to people until they go, Cassian. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, everybody, can I buy one orange? <laughs> so. One banana for Cassia. <laughs> I just feel like Cassian must have like some sort of like himbo ass <gasps> voice. But he does like, a lot of growls. But he growls, here. I feel like, when he's being either ferocious or passionate saucy. and saucy. But I feel like other than that, like he probably has like he's probably the loudest guy. Yeah, I thought a lot about his voice while I put my makeup on in silence this morning. Of course, you got to. I think, I mean, I, when, don't you, when you read, you don't hear their voices in your head? Well, completely. I mean, I think I also don't know how much of that is, like, because I narrate audiobooks mm. that, like, I think of, like, especially that's why I can't listen to audiobooks because I always think, like, how would I do this? Right. Oh, how I, how would I do this character? Would I make it? And then I get lost in thinking about then that. And then work, I stop then you're, like, in the work zone because you yeah. have to make it work. Because I got to make it work. <gasps> got to uh, make it work. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I, I passively hear voices. Yeah. Like, when I'm reading a book. Not just, like, saying things to me, but, like, the book's characters. That are, like, the worst thing when you read the name, like, especially, like, when you're reading something like uh, Game of Thrones, when, like, I don't know <laughs> how to pronounce any of their names, but I'm like, oh, you know the character based on, like, the the structure of the word, yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, totally. And, like, then, but then you try to say the name outside, and people are like... Tyrion? What are you talking about? <laughs> Tyrion. You idiot bitch. And I'm like, whoa, too aggro. <laughs> you are too passionate about Game of Thrones, <laughs> sir. Um, those books are it's so thick. I read them. Yuck. Oh, yeah, man. Um, that Red Wedding, man. It really comes out of nowhere. You heard about the Red Wedding? Oh, my God. I just remember reading that was, I, I was up until, like, 5 o'clock in the morning, just like, flap, flap, because I remember it got to the Red Wedding, and it was at, like, 2 a.m., and I was like, I can't stop now, and I just, like, stayed up all night reading it. Um, yeah, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm not like the other girls. I read. All night. No sleep. All night. Only I don't read. need any second of sleep. That's why you have five o'clock shadow. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading. too tired. I'm too tired to fully shave. Jackie, we are on episode 40 of this How? show. How? How did that happen? I love talking about these books. Uh, <laughs> that was not the plan. Uh, but that has changed now. Yeah, and also, yeah, 39 costumes. 40 episodes, yeah, 39, 39 costumes. Because we didn't dress up for the very first episode. We did not. 
We work just as ourselves. I have so many corsets now. I'm not mad about it. No. But now, here's my problem. I've seen on some websites for clothing mm. that fairy core is actually in style. Oh, yeah. So... Am I just gonna start dressing like that all the time? I was I was going to. Oh, I mean no. I kinda already started doing yeah, that. Yeah, I've already started I started using my costume pieces as regular clothes. Yeah. Why not? And this is where I am. And you know what? I encourage you guys to join us. Please. Fairy core. Who Will gives you? a fuck? Who gives a fuck? Right? Wear whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Do what you wanna do. Doesn't matter. Hell yeah. Um, As she says behind the, the huge wheel of like a Bentley, being like, ah! Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> well, I mean, like. Where are all the puppies? Don't, don't skin dogs, please. <laughs> uh, I meant more just like, <laughs> dress how you'd like to dress that doesn't involve any sort of mutilation. Yes, yes. Please. So we. Uh, return to this emergency meeting that we had left before. Nesta and Cassina have flown down to the river house. Reese and Feyre and everybody, they've got some, some stuff to discuss. They've it's got not some good. explaining to do. And Elaine has shown up right at the end of the last chapter, uh, the first time that they've seen each other since their little fight, their tiff. And Nesta is not happy at the start of chapter 21. But when is Nesta happy? Never, but she's been doing a little better. And yes, now, and now she's not happy again. Not doing good. She So Elaine has arrived, and she's announced she's going to volunteer and try to find the Dread Trove pieces before old, young Brialin can. Man. This is a tense interaction because, of course, their last one had been the fight that led to the kiss. Mm. Though Elaine probably didn't understand that she was getting her sister laid. Yes. Elaine stands up to Nesta again and, and informs Nesta that regardless of her demand that Elaine not go after the trove, Ugh. that she can do what she wants and she is not ruled by Nesta. Whoa. They continue to argue and Amran challenges Nesta. Well, if you're so mad and you don't want Elaine to do it, then you fucking do it. She didn't say that. She didn't use the F-bomb. I keep saying, I use too many F-bombs sometimes. Yeah, I'm always saying that about Natalie. It was like, Natalie, like a sailor. They're more, <laughs> it's not that as much as they're more impactful if you don't always say them. I, I completely understand. I was raised in a home where um, the, the phrase was, it's lazy speaking. My mom didn't like cursing because she was like, it's a lazy way of speaking. She's like, think of a better word. There must be a better word in there. She's and not yet, wrong. She's it's, not wrong. It's like that in scripts, too. Yes. You don't need it. Sometimes Says this fucking, you listen know, to, listen comes to. Out of, what comes out of this little trash, trash hat. Trash hat? Yeah, I don't even got a hat on. <laughs> 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 so when Amron challenges Nesta, Nesta kind of stumbles in a bit of a panic. Like, I can't, I, I can't do that. She tells them truthfully that she nearly died when she tracked the cauldron. And because of that, Elaine is absolutely not going to look for it. Whoa. Why? Elaine demanded. Shall I tend to my little garden forever? Ooh. When Nesta flinched. Elaine said, You can't have it both ways. You cannot resent my decision to lead a small, quiet life while also refusing to let me do anything greater. Go off! Go off, bitch! We see you, Elaine. We yes. see you. We hear you. Yes! She gets a lot of judgment. My s oh, Elaine gets a lot of judgment by the listeners and fans of the books, myself included, but again, there is nothing wrong with wanting to live a simple life. And by simple life, I'm referring to traveling the countryside in yes. an RV and terrorizing families with rich girl behavior. Please. Oh, my God. Imagine I would love. Nesta and Elaine on simple on life. On simple life. Oh, my God. Actually, I think they'd be. No, no, they'd be really bad at it because they really did. Bad. Yeah. And they also had experienced becoming poor and then becoming rich again. Yeah. And then having to go back to it. Yep. I'd watch it, it. I'd watch it. <laughs> The argument turns to Feyre and Nesta. So the, the other two sisters start kind of going back and forth about, again, they speak for Elaine like she's a little baby. But Elaine finally reveals the truth today. She is not a 25-year-old baby, but in fact a grown adult, human-turned-fey woman-female. 
go off. In fact, we know for sure she's a 25-year-old woman because she begins to talk about her trauma. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, her traumas. So when she, she's correct to lash out at Nesta here because she points out that all Nesta does is reflect on how Elaine going to the cauldron affects Nesta. Not thinking to ask Elaine about how it affected Elaine. Whoa. Always tried to protect, never trying to learn. But look at this. You're laying down truths over here, Natalie. It's because I'm dressed like Helen Shirley. <laughs> forgot her name. <laughs> you already forgot her name. Well, um, it's fine. It's I don't fine. think anyone knows the name of Brian Doyle Murray's wife in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I actually vacation. don't know if that, it's ever even said. Maybe she says her name. I forget. Yeah. I think he goes, Helen! Just like that. No, he's not here. Brian Doyle Helen! Murray is not here. Yeah, there it is. Whoa. Two, two of them. Two of us. Can I buy an orange? <laughs> <laughs> Did I do it yet? Did you, were you fantasized? I'm not going to fantasize about fantasized. you. Fantasized. No. <laughs> Meaning, yeah, that you, I am I your was fantasy. taken into, I was taken to Prithian in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of my bejeweled hands that Natalie provided. My your siphons. siphons. They're glowing. Kind of. They're sparkly. Yeah, they're sparkly. But her standing up for herself, Elaine, that is, has again stunned Nesta into silence. And Elaine tells the others she'll be waiting for her cue to begin the search, and she leaves the room, not extending a departing, departing word to Nesta. After Elaine leaves, Feyre tries to gently speak to Nesta again, but Nesta cuts her off. Nesta twisted to Feyre. Can't you find the trove? She hated each cowardly word. He did the fear in her heart. He did that in merely asking. She'd exposed her preference for Elaine. And I mean, yeah, that's brutal. Um, yeah, she'd rather her go and die while trying to get it than have Elaine do it. And just so, like, nakedly say, I don't care if you go and kill yourself. Yeah. She's being a bit of a Jamie Lynn Spears here. Whoa. Oh, don't even. Have you guys read the Britney Spears memoir? I'm almost done with the Britney book, so I can't think about anything else. But I'm just so angry. So yeah. angry. Yeah. Uh, Nesta's showing contempt and hatred for the person, Feyre, who has saved her ass time and time again. Yep. And what's really at the core of that? Hmm? Shame, self-loathing. Think about that, Jamie Lynn. Hmm? You feel shame, I think. It's hard to have a Feyre or a Brittany as a sister. Don't get me wrong. You know, when you have one of those, like, Are you talking about me right now? Is it me? <laughs> Wait, are you the Feyre yeah. slash Brittany? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm totally not the Feyre slash Brittany of this. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who is in our world. Nobody really. No, I guess nobody is. Um, but it would be hard. Every time I try to fly, I fall without my wings. I feel so small. I guess I need you, baby. Oh, my God. I... That song already made me sad after we did our pop history episodes, but I can't listen to it now without crying because I know. of the revelations in the I book. Know. The, the bombshells. <gasps> but it would be hard to have Feyre or Britney Spears as a sister because it is, you know, like, oh, you're good at everything? Cool. Wow. Amazing. I'm just here, I guess. But you do have to carve your own path out, which is like kind of what Nessa's doing now ideally as far away maybe she's separating herself from Feyre in this way Jamie I'm just saying if you're listening to me yeah you just gotta which obviously she is I know I figured um you know you just gotta find your other the other pathway but you know she's still kind of fall and this is falling into these old habits of just like you do it you do it you save us once again and I think that's terrible. But I also appreciate the fact that she said she hated each cowardly yes. word. She at least like, knows. She knows. She yeah. knows. She knows that she she like hates herself for it. Which again, self loathing. Yeah. Anyway, it's a bugaboo. It is a bit of a bugaboo. Anyway, Feyre quietly tells her she can't actually look for it. Nesta sees her making eyes with Reese, and Whoa. they're both clearly agreeing to make an announcement. Oh. What's the announcement? <gasps> Bitch is pregnant. Bitch is full of his seed. Why was she being protected this whole time? Why he has a shield around her so that no one can get close to her? 
got Which a baby. Also is really cute. It is really it's cute. It's really cute that he puts the shield around her because she's got a baby in there. And it's the kind of pregnancy announcement that's joyful and not like, I'm, uh, uh, I'm pregnant. Uh, 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 um, which I still think, uh, I think that's part of me that, you know, that never grows up past 22. That like, whenever I hear someone's pregnant, part of me, I'm like, you're like, oh, oh good. you uh, smiling? Good? We smiling? We happy okay. with this? Right. But it's like, you're, you're not everybody's 22 and doesn't want that. <laughs> but you can also be any age and not. We support, yeah. we oh, support reproductive uh, rights. Yes. Um, but if you remember, if, because if you remember at the end of Court of Frost and Starlight, she makes it very clear that she really wants this and feels confident, even if she's very young. And I said, Guva, Guva, Guva. Turns out that this is news to everyone in the room, save Reese. Cassian is jubilant. He's filled with joy. Uh, he's uh, so over the moon. Buy two oranges. <laughs> <laughs> one for me and one for the baby. Oh, Cassian, babies can't have oranges, honey. What? I'll chew it up. I'll <laughs> spit it in a bowl. I just sound like baby. You just sound like Holden Neely. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, I need more lizard in that. More yeah. guttural. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, there he is. There's Holden McNeely. Um <laughs> Cassian tackles Reese in his happiness. Even Amran almost smiles. She goes like, and even that hurts her face. Even that is a kind of scary. Yeah. Azriel goes to give Feyre a kiss on her head, and then we—that's the moment we realize, oh, Reese has been in a psycho about the shield. Mm-hmm. He's probably going to be like this for the next ten years or so. Or Think it, of the shield he's going to put around the child. I know. Oh, at least the next ten months, because we learned from Nesta's thoughts that it takes longer to grow Fae children. Oh my God! More, more time in there, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Just how menstrual cycles are different, so are gestational periods for fetuses. It turns out, but they're actually two months. Along here. During all of the hooting and hollering, Nesta is silently watching it all unfold as if behind a pane of glass. Finally, she quietly says to Feyre, Congratulations. During this, she catches Reese staring her down, and she instinctively knows to nod her head at him, to demure to him in some animalistic way so that it's clear she won't harm the baby. It's very planet Earth, but not on not Earth. Earth. Yeah, on planet Prithian. Planet Prith. Yeah, I'll watch it. I would love to watch that. Are you kidding? Their primal conversation seems to placate Reese. Basically, like, they do this, like, weird jungly in the wild kind of they he looks at her and she nods and like bows her head and then he understands she means no harm yes I, it makes me think of that um that animal reality show where everyone was given an animal and they came oh, in and yeah. they weren't allowed to speak using human words they could only act like the animal and the only time they were able to actually speak to each other was um if they won a date but they would have to do things like mating dances and stuff like that and it was a lot of like necks all right a lot of necks Whoa. Oh, I am not like that. <laughs> because how else are you supposed date? to see? Like, so they were just like, ah! Ah! and like that's how they would tell if they wanted to go on a date with but somebody. But then you would have to know what mating dances look like of all the animals. Did they get to learn that? Or no, they ju- no, they they just made up their own. So there was a lot of humping. There was a lot of humping of the air, and not like in a juicy way. This is a real reality I, I show. I mean, I it's that's. So incredibly stupid. <laughs> I do. I wish the you know, whole thing. <laughs> you know what I would watch is if it was all birds because bird mating is the weirdest. Have you ever seen like the jungle birds when they mate and their <laughs> yeah and their heads are moving yeah. back and forth? Love in the Jungle is the name of the show. Oh, good. In so case everybody you guys can were go watch it. Love in the Jungle. I'm never watching that show. <laughs> um, you would be so mad. Yeah, I'd be at real mad. Show. I would be very angry. <laughs> so, you know, in this moment, I think it, Reese maybe even learns something about Nesta in this moment because I do think he still holds on to this very real fear that she's actually a dark person or a dangerous person based on her 
own actions. He doesn't really know. know. And he knows what he does know. And what they all know is that she is powerful in some fashion. Right. So they don't know how. And especially if she can't control it yet. And she won't You can't trust her. She refuses to harness it. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you just don't know with complicated people until they show themselves in this way where Nest is like, I would, you know, in her mind, she's she knows she would never, ever hurt the baby or hurt Feyre in that way, but he doesn't actually know that. But I think he kind of learns that in this moment. Reese asks everyone to keep this very secret for now, for obvious reasons. They have like 600 enemies. Yeah. Not even Varian's allowed to know yet. So Feyre can technically do magic, but it's advised to not mess with it, especially since her powers are so unique. Whoa, so it's like she can't eat sushi and Mm -mm. she can't use her powers? Nope. It's too much. You give up too much. Too much! And then your teeth start falling out and your hair starts falling out. So you, that's the love of a mother? Uh, I just, I think I watched too much A Baby Story on TLC. You're watching a lot of these shows. I guess you do for your other show. Yeah, you do. <laughs> so she says to Nesta. Wait, you didn't, we used to watch A Baby Story. That was like old school TLC. Oh, maybe back in like had, old, old? Yeah, vaguely, old, old. Because they would remember have like that. a marriage story. They'd have a dating story. Yeah. And they like some. When they were still trying to play off like it was like learning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. Um, but that doesn't get the numbers. No. So she says to Nesta, I can't do this, obviously. So why don't you give it a go? If at first you don't succeed, scry, scry again. <laughs> yeah. With this news. <laughs> yeah, N- Natalie, I feel like you need to be celebrated. <laughs> I think there needs to be a float in your honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with this news, the good and gentle part of Nesta comes forward. She can't express it outwardly, but she does care deeply for both her sister and the fetus. <laughs> no, wow, killing it in this paragraph, Natalie. <laughs> fetus. Fetus. <laughs> that she's carrying. She agrees to try scrying once again in the hopes that it will be able to tell them something about where the dread trove rests. So even though she can't be like openly... Farah, I so care for you and the baby, and I want to protect you. She does agree. I will try. I will try to find them. Okay. Okay. We cut to Nesta after this meeting, walking with Farah to the front of the river house while they await Cassian finishing up some business. It's quiet between the sisters. He's buying oranges. I don't. <laughs> he's gonna. He's asking how to he's buy oranges. Asking. <laughs> it's quiet between them, and it's not in a relaxed way. Nesta is uncomfortable and not sure what to do when Feyre blurts out that the baby's a boy. That Nesta is the first to know this beyond Reese. And we hear from off camera that the Bat Boys are whooping it up again. And it's obvious Reese is also telling them the news. So cute. I know. It's so cute. Feyre goes on to explain that she knows because the bone carver told her, but not sure how the bone carver knows. Remember when I dressed up as her fetus? You dress up as the young toddler. Toddler, but she love him. He sounds like Wendy. He does. <laughs> right? Isn't that what toddlers sound like? I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know these things. Yeah, definitely. As Feyre tries to continue a light conversation with Nesta, she lashes out at every kindness Feyre offers, like a sulky teen. You're falling backwards, girl. Come on. You were, like, just making steps forward. So Feyre was trying to have this intimate moment with her sister and, like, trying to connect with her sister, and Nesta just keeps saying... Oh, I guess it's why you want a boy, because it's so hard having sisters. <laughs> it's like, was like I didn't even say that, girl. girl. <laughs> Exasperated, Feyre says, I just wanted you to know because you're my sister, you weirdo. Not verbatim, yeah. but that's basically what she says. Their conversation ends, not angrily, but sort of awkwardly, as Cassian appears in the hall to take Nesta back up to the House of Wind. Chapter 22 begins with Az and Cass sitting friends style in their allotted armchairs in the commons room between their bedrooms in the House of Wind later that evening. Reese and Moore also have chairs next to theirs in front of this fireplace, but in this moment they are very Joey and Chandler. Oh, and they're just sitting there just like trying to like race just to pull up the thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you like. Good talking skills, Jackie. Joey. <laughs> they put the thing and they have the other thing and they, they go, yeah. You gotta watch the video to see that gripping. <laughs> Mimery. 
I know the majority of you listen to it. The, the vast majority of you listen and not watch, but you're missing out on some action shots. I mean, and also smoldering looks. Yeah. Smoldering. Smoldering. Ah, ouch, ouch. <laughs> Thank you. That's what I needed the encouragement. Oh, oh, ooh, so ooh, hot. Ooh, ooh. ooh. Um, obviously, in that scenario, as would be Chandler and Cassie would be Joey. Right? Like, that would be... Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I had to think about it in my brain of, like, just to remember, because, like, I can't remember the last time I saw an episode of Friends. But... I've only recent, like, I, we all, if you grew up in the 90s, 2000s, you had seen Friends through osmosis, but I'd only very recently actually, like, sat and watched a season of it. Really? Yeah. What do you, I, I hear it doesn't hold up. I mean, obviously, it's not culturally great. Yes. But, I mean, the writing's fun. Yeah. There's just obviously things, a lot of, a lot of not... You go, oh, wow, we were saying that. God, huh? it, oh, it wasn't that long ago, huh? That this no. was accepted? No. Okay, interesting. There's a whole plot once about how um, somebody, I think it was, uh, what's her name, Lisa Kudrow's character? Uh, Phoebe. Phoebe was dating a guy who just grabbed everybody's asses all the like molested people. <sighs> and it was like a funny, it was like a funny bit. Isn't that show? so funny how he grabs everybody's asses without their consent? Yeah, it was like, maybe it wasn't Phoebe's boyfriend. I'm sure I'll get corrected by somebody, but like, it was, I think maybe somebody else's boyfriend was grabbing Phoebe's ass. Oh, yeah. She was massaging somebody else's boyfriend. Oh, and she, and, and he, he was like grabbed grabbing her, her ass. And it was like a big funny. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, wow, he's so quirky. Wow. <laughs> Um, that sucks. Yeah, that sucks. Um, Not to mention the other um, horrific storylines that they have. Oh, sure. Also, there's only white people, I guess. In yeah, New York. there's there's lots of problems with it. But you also, R.I.P. Matthew Berry. R.I.P. Matthew Berry. R.I.P. R.I.P. Rest in peace. I don't know which tone we should be taking here. Um, so they are going over everything that happened in the prior meeting. And Cassian is thinking, as, as, as and Cass are basically like going over... Everything that they just talked about and went through in the big river house meeting. And Cassian is thinking about how concerned he is having Nesta scry and search for the trove. But as a warrior, how he'd never try to hold her back from her right to do so. You know, just not being like, I can't protect you like you're a little fragile girl, but I don't really want you to do these things right. either. But do you think that that makes Feyre Monica... <laughs> and that Nesta would be Ross? Uh, Nesta would be Ross? Because Monica and Ross are brother and sister. I know, so but I then, like, like then... if you do that, then the more who's Elaine? Or is that, would you think that would be Rees and more? Yeah, I feel like that's more Rees and more. Okay. Yeah. Ew, Rees is Ross. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> well, that means that uh, Rachel's Feyre... Okay, that kind of makes sense. All right, I'm so glad that we figured it out. <laughs> Wait, then who who we're forgetting somebody? Phoebe. Who's Phoebe? Oh, Elaine. <coughs> I think Phoebe's Elaine. I think. Oh, oh, <gasps> and Nesta is her twin, the mean one. Remember, she has the mean oh, twin. Oh, yeah, Ursula. She's Ursula. Oh my God, yes. This is really All right, this is working weirdly out. working out. All right, <laughs> we got this figured out. Hey, we we needed this. Okay. <laughs> um. I was doing like blah, 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 blah. Oh, you were doing that. Yeah. yeah. I thought we were gonna say that we were just applauding ourselves. <laughs> I was I mean I am known to applaud for myself often. Me too. But <laughs> a little self pat on the back. Yeah. <laughs> hey me, I'm great. Hey, good job, me. Still, even though Cassie knows he can't control her, he's still pushing back against her being ready to try another scrying. Um, oh my god, didn't Joey date Ursula? Yes, I think so. Oh my Whoa! god! I'm pretty sure they oh went on dates. Oh my god, yes, yes! Holy shit. Dude. This is a, a whole universe colliding. We've got, we gotta write some fanfic, I guess. <laughs> the crossover we didn't want. Yeah, but that's like are receiving. Friends is not sexy. No, <laughs> there's no one on that show I find sexy. No, although Jennifer Aniston, I mean, sure. No, yeah, she's Jennifer Aniston. I think Courtney Cox is funny. I I think she's cool and like she's not gross. I always wanted to be Lisa Kudrow, so 
Well, I wanted to be her more in Romeo and Michelle. I mean, through many things. I just love Lisa Kudrow. All right, we got to get back All right, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're no, back. This is not We're friends. back. I'm okay. sorry. So he still, even though he knows he can't control her, he wants to push back about her being ready to try another scrying because he doesn't know if she is ready. Yeah. He's seen what can happen and he knows that she's still healing and maybe it's too soon to take such a loaded risk. Asriel, in his part, counters to Cassian. The time is kind of of the essence and they can't really wait very long lest Brialin get her hands on one of those drove items. We gotta stop this old young bitch. We gotta stop her. They don't really come to a conclusion before their talk turns to the bundle of joy arriving Soon. We learn through Cassian's thoughts that the rightful heir of a high lord isn't always based on birth order or even bloodline. Sometimes, like apparently in the Autumn Court, the heir isn't even magically chosen for centuries because there is no heir chosen uh, in the uh, the Autumn Court there. But I think what that means is that they never know which baby is going to receive the most the hugest amount of power. Right. So you kind of just gotta like wait and see what they grow up to be, which honestly, it's a nice change of pace. From what? That like just like the regular hierarchy of like oh you're oh, the first one you get it like a cast yeah some, yeah I just feel like then it's like oh okay well at least it's based on some manner of like merit um, meritocracy yes <laughs> Cassian thinks about how regardless of how much or little the baby gets the baby's going to be loved almost smothered by it Cassian wants to know whether Asriel would ever want a child and oh to have the luxury of centuries before you even have to think about asking your friends. Yeah, they've known each other for centuries and they've not once brought it up. Although I think that that I understand that. I think sometimes when I talk to uh Jeff and how he talks to his friends sometimes. Just like, you don't talk about any. He's like, no, we talked about the Punisher series. <laughs> no, I agree. I think it's more like uh, notable that they have so many years to live in their life that it's not even come up. It doesn't yet. even come up. It's nice. Oh, if only. Where it's always just shoved down our throats. From time fucking is ticking. Day Your one. body is decaying. As soon as you turn 12, they're like, get on oh, top God. of it. Oh, God. It's all going backwards. No, fuck that. That's garbage. Yeah, That's on. patriarchal It just gets nonsense. better. Give me a break. It's much easy, actually much better to be an adult mature woman because it's really hard to be a young woman in this country. It's yeah. very manipulative. Yeah. It still is. No matter what age you are, it's, it's true. always about what you're supposed to have and like what you're supposed to look like. Get off of my back. Yeah, I said wow. it. Yeah, I'm turtling out. Whoa. I don't want you on my back. I know it's a hard shell. I don't want you on my back. Don't flip me over. I'll bite you. <laughs> You feeling good? You got it out? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Even though I have wings, and it's the opposite of a turtle. Yeah, it's the very, it's, ooh, that'd be cute, that little flying turtle. Oh. That'd be pretty cute. I think that then you would definitely win the race. <laughs> yeah, I would. Um, that was a faster turtle than a hare. When you get in the air, it's just easier to be faster. <laughs> because of uh, physics? What are we supposed to learn from that? Take your time? I don't know. Enjoy the ride? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what we're supposed to learn from that. Um, I, feel I like probably, probably should have learned something we from it. We feel like we're supposed to learn something from it. What Cassian is really asking in this moment when he asks Asriel this is whether he's ever going to be honest with more. And it's like, okay, hey, bro, but even if he does be honest with her, they don't know what she'll say. And also, maybe she doesn't want a kid. So it doesn't necessarily, it's not like the same question. Mm -hmm. As asks him back if he wants a kid. And in that moment, Cassian flashes two thoughts I never have when someone asks me if I want a kid. Hot, Hot sex. sex. Well, I mean, it's how you make it. But I think, <laughs> but I think that we're to take away from this that when asked about kids, the first thing Cassian does is think of Nesta, which is in fact very sweet. Oh my god. But these thoughts of the sounds of her moans <laughs> drag him back to his fretting over the fact that he finished and she did not. Oh my god, he's gotta go finish her off. He hasn't seen her since after the meeting because he was working uh, up in the Windhaven, so he's not even sure what to do next because they haven't really discussed it, but he knows he needs to win at orgasms. Yes, it's the greatest competition of all. That's the kind of toxic competitiveness that I can get behind. Yes. 
Cassian's leg is bouncing in contemplative anxiety, and he comes to, basically, to the present moment, realizing that Az is still waiting for him to respond to the child question. Cassian responds that he definitely wants children, and he thinks about how he'd never let them feel alone or cold or scared for even a moment as a clear reflection of his own childhood. (laughs) He reflects on how it hasn't been a priority because... There was never someone it felt right with so far. He secretly in his heart of hearts didn't want to do this unless he felt a mating bond. Still feels this way after 500 years. And that's what I think all of you out there deserve too. Whoa. Okay. There's no perfect timing. You just wait till someone lifts you up and teaches you how to box. Yeah, flies you up to the top of a house when you're up there and you've got all these powers. You can't leave the house. And that's all you got that's all you need to have a baby a baby. A baby. Baby. You should wait for somebody who you you both lift each other. You know? Mm. You find that kind of special Botox. Yeah. Love some Botox. Yeah, man. You raise me up. It's like playing Josh <laughs> Physically, Groban. Yeah. My face lifts up. Because it just like squeezed into my muscles. Yeah, yeah man. My face is never going to move again. <laughs> I, I, I'm smiling right now. I promise you. Um... I was just talking about getting fill- like I keep threatening Jeff that I'm gonna get lip fillers, no, but like you not, do not like, need to, you do not need lip fillers. I don't need lip fillers, but I have but like not even just because I know a bunch of people that get like small amounts. But I was like, yeah, no, fillers. if I do it, I want I want to look like yeah. This. If you're gonna do lip fillers, you're I'm doing lip fillers. fillers. I'm gonna want to look like this. It's gonna be difficult for my talking career. Yeah, you mostly but, talk for your job. Um, I think that I would look cute. I, you know, I support you. Thank you. I think it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, but think of how young I'm going to be. Yeah, those definitely, huge fake lips (laughs) definitely bring youth forward. (laughs) Um, I do, I love when somebody wants to do a bunch of lip filler knowing... Knowing they're like, what they're this, in for. This I think it's what, great. I want big fucking fake lips. Yeah, I want big fake lips. Fuck yeah, dude. Love that. Yeah, get them. But you have, you don't need, you have good. Thank you. You have good ones. Thank you, Natalie. That's also when I'm going to start my baby voice phase, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, you you would have to become the gremlin. The uh, girl gremlin. I mean, that's, I'm on my way to becoming Greta Gremlin. Greta Gremlin. I always forget her name. Greta Gremlin, of course. <laughs> Silly me. Cassian suddenly stands up while they're having this conversation and as watches him quizzically. Cassian aimed for the door. He wouldn't be able to rest, to focus, until he evened the playing field. As he entered the hall, he muttered without looking back. Turn a blind eye, chaperone. (laughs) (laughs) We cut to a Nesta POV from the same evening, where she has already curled up in bed and is reading a spicy romance novel when she hears a knock at the door. (laughs) Yes? The handle turned. And there he was. Cassian still wore his leathers, the overlapping scales of them full of shadows that made him look like some great writhing beast as he shut the door. (laughs) (laughs) I love the, I love the, there he was, uh, expression. It just says so much without saying anything that the only he could the only he that it could be in her mind, the only one Oof. she ever thinks of is Cassian. Oof. And there he was. Woo. Woo. She watches him as he leans against her door as he closes it, asks him what he wants. He watches her sit up, and it's clear he's noting her silk nightgown, not answering. She asks again. His voice was rough as he said, I've never seen you with your hair down. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting in her feelings under his stare. She watches as he leans on his hands as though forcing himself not to reach for her. Scary if it's a creep. Very enticing if, if it's, it's somebody someone, you want to have sex if with. If it's somebody like Cassian. Oh, my Lord. She smells his musk and oh, it's different. Yeah, it's, oh, I, I assuming it smells, it smells like, like sex musk. panther. Yes. Ow. It set her pulse hammering careening so far off the path of sanity that she scrambled after its vanishing leash. To let him affect her so easily, 
so greatly unacceptable. (laughs) 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 This isn't even your favorite of the scenes. I know, but I still love this scene because you're so right. Just opening up and like just thinking, and there he was. Like just imagine her slowly looking him down and looking him back up. Because she's probably fantasized about him doing this, like, over and over and over again. Well, ever since the, like, time when she's, like, when she swore she heard her door open for that. Mm. But she's been doing it long before then. Even when you go read the bonus chapter back, it's not, it's very, it's, like, tense, but the end, the way it ends, you're already knowing she's passionate. She's thinking about him all the time. Yeah. She yeah, tries to, it. in this moment, as this is happening, she's trying to play it cool, but he's cutting straight to the point. He's not here to play word games. He's here to settle a debt. No. Not good to have a debt, you know, though I'd take the interest rate on this one. I will go. Right? I will go. She's scrambling for anything to shield with, but she's having a hard time thinking straight. Not as he's done playing. She tries to push him away, not physically, verbally, giving him a dozen outs to walk out of the room. Just go. Just go. Your friends, what about your friends? They hate me. You obviously think that was a mistake the other night. No. Blah, blah, blah. No, he says. He says the only mistake was that he, it's don't look at me. No! Was that he came before he could taste her. Oh, God. (laughs) Natalie! (laughs) Natalie said it! Ah, God, this is a... His appraisal enveloped her like a rush of wind, of fire. What about training? She breathed. This stays out of training. His eyes had turned wholly dark. (laughs) (laughs) She finally looks down. I think you lose some calories in a different way, girl. (laughs) Yeah. If only they had us in the peanut gallery just shouting things at them. Oh, my God. And us just going, oh, 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 man. What are you going to do? What are you going to say? What are you going to say to that? And then just me going, like, as the door opens and me just going, drink them up. Drink them (laughs) up. Um, I would love to, you know, encourage someone. (laughs) But, like, you know. I'm sure they would super appreciate the help. Yeah. Just, like, revving them up. Like a hype man. Hype man for sex. I would love to be a sex hype man. (laughs) Put it out there. Get in there. Get back in there. (laughs) Flip it over. (laughs) There you go. You got this. Yeah, you got this. You can get your legs in that position. Come on. Bend the neck. Bend the neck. (laughs) (laughs) She finally looks down from his face, uh, you know, below the face, and the view shatters her mind into pieces. (laughs) Before Before she completely lets go, she has the wherewithal to make it clear. There can only be sex, nothing more. Sure. Just as her sister before her, unbeknownst to Nesta, pushed away her feelings for a taste of those sweet bad meats. <laughs> Why did I write that? Ruffle Gross. my wings, Natalie. Just as Cassian's brother before him, Reese, is hurt at this request, but brushes it off because he's got to see that booty. He gots to. He's got to. <laughs> ew, get out of my fantasies, Maroon 5. Gross. Ew, ew. Cassian agrees. Okay, it's just sex. This was sure to be a mistake. Sure to be something she paid for, suffered for. But she couldn't bring herself to deny him. Deny herself. Just for tonight, she'd allow it. So Nesta met his eyes again, took an every trembling, restrained inch, and said, Yes. Oh my goodness, this, this scene, scene, guys. This scene, dude. This scene. I know you are holding out I, for, for the, the coming up scene. chapters, but praise the mother in this one. Oh no, this, because this was the beginning of the release. The other one was just the one that like makes me literally go like, ha 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 ha, <laughs> aloud as I read it. <laughs> you know, there's just certain scenes like that oh, yeah. when you're reading smut where you just like, I literally like goofy brin on my face, just like, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh God, <laughs> what? There, uh, so that scene's coming up. We're yeah. not at that scene yet. No, this one, I don't but know this if is it, a good this might be my favorite on the book, but it's, it. I'm not sure. There's a couple. Well, especially because this is when they finally are able to like unleash. But isn't it so, man, how many times have you had the conversation of like, this is just going to be sex? I mean, I've, I've only 
known my husband. I mean, you're right. I, I forgot you've only biblically known your husband. Biblically. Um, I, uh, I will say that I have. And it's always somebody's <laughs> lying to somebody. I have to, Jackie. I know you I'm not have. leaving you hanging. I know you have. Because somebody's lying to somebody in this situation. I feel like every time you say it. Somebody always ends up lying. If the words come out, because otherwise you just know, obviously, it's yeah. just sex. But if yeah. it's like, it's just sex. And it's like, oh, we've got to put rules oh, down. God. All right. And that means that you're trying to shield your heart from feeling anything. Yeah, doth protest too much, much. Yeah, much. Um, <laughs> uh, so let's just say... You know, others read these for us. Oh, let's just read them a couple of times. The debt gets paid, and there's no more no after the more. debt gets paid. The debt is paid. Even if Nesta had decided she wanted to take out another loan, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Watching Nesta climax had been as close to a religious experience as Cassian had ever had. That's how the beginning of chapter 23 begins. Dude! He describes how his many years of being a disciplined warrior was the only thing that got him to leave the room as she reached for him. Dude! But he is still shook to his core. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! He couldn't get her perfect taste out of his mouth. Natalie! <laughs> Not as he washed for bed. Not as he pumped himself dry. Soaking his sheets, Natalie! I'm sorry! <laughs> I'm not going to keep making you read the filthy stuff. It's just this is a very filthy part of the book. And we have to honor its filthiness. Because what, what are we just going to glide right over it? I mean, we did actually glide over the dirtiest parts. Yes, we did. We did. But I hope, I certainly hope, if you don't read the books, just read that chapter. Just, like, search it out. I'm sure you can find the chapter Or you at least. just listen to all of our dudes grappling with erotica. Yeah. Put together, we'll put the scene it. together. Yes. Suffice it to say, he's having a seriously hard time managing how he's going to deal with being in the ring with her that morning. Yeah. He feels covered in her sex. Yeah. And it's all he can think about. Yeah. No matter, because their training must go on. So he avoids her at breakfast and goes up to the training ring to wait. When Nesta appears, he notes that she looks utterly unbothered, or even shy, or pleased. But then Azrael walks in behind her with a knowing smirk on his face. Oh, my God. But also, like, Nesta, come on, show a little bit. I'm so not that guy. I'm so just like, oh. Hi. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God. Remember that? Man, that was nuts, huh? Oh what God. happened yesterday? <laughs> Remember that? As awkward as it may be, Cassian thinks how he doesn't regret any of this. And for whatever reason, it's so weird. I don't know why, but he hasn't been able to, he hasn't been this out of control with lust since he was oh a boy. I don't know God, what I don't know why. Morning, Ness. Cassian said cheerfully. He nodded to Nesta. Ness, how'd you sleep? Her eyes flashed with the anger that was like kindling to his own. But then she smiled coolly. Like a babe. <laughs> oh, He's like, oh, okay, we're going to play game of least effective. Yeah. Cool, 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 yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, I can play this game. All right, I can play this game. Cassian can be cool as a cuke. Yeah. Not really. No, he's not cute. <laughs> he's not. There's no part of him that's cute. He's all pineapple. He's all pineapple Yeah, man. Spiky but juicy on the yeah, inside. Yeah, so juicy and he's a little sour. And oh, he's mm, tart. Gushing. He's soaked the sheets. Yep. Can you imagine the spray? Like, imagine it was like a fire hose. Oh, it's like, God. Whoa! <laughs> Maybe that's how they come. We don't know. I, I don't She's know. never described the amount that comes out. It's got to be more than a human, right? I mean, there's, their cycles are already different, so probably. It's got to be. I, although, you know, it's the fey world, so I bet it, like... Tastes really good oh, I or hope something, so. and it's like filled with sparkles. That I guess maybe if, maybe if it's your maid, it tastes really good. Yeah, and oh god, that would be. But then that would suck so bad because like if you're never mated, then it's like oh you oh Ray, just regular old cum. Yeah, <laughs> just got regular cum. Although we get regular cum forever, and we're fine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe you don't know that it's better until you're mated. Probably. Maybe it's that kind of thing. Yeah, like a, like a different like se like a different sense. Yeah, has opened within you. Oh no, that's you that's how that you musk. get. To, that's how <laughs> that's how you get to them to be fucking all the time. Yeah. 
Azriel tells them he's he he came in behind Nesta. He's not usually there in the mornings, but he tells them he's there this morning to train for himself before he leaves for his day. Through Cass's thoughts, we learn that he feels that Az and Nesta may have a certain camaraderie due to their respective eccentric eccentricities. Not in a sexy way, just like he notes that they sort of have an understanding of one another that neither shies away from the other's intense nature and it gives them an understanding. Well, they are both like, they both got a lot of feelings. Brooding. Yeah, very, very brooding. Suddenly, Nesta asks them to show her how they engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat so she can watch and learn. Cassian realizes that would it probably serve him to release some of this energy still coursing through his body. Oh, I thought you released enough of it last <laughs> Barely night, not. Cassian. Barely not. <laughs> After the night before, so he and Azriel say, all right, well, we can show you some hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> the two of them take their shirts of off because why not? Their I love this. Just like, oh, yeah, you want us to fight? Yeah, wait. <laughs> let me take <laughs> this off first. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Hang on. Let me take off this so I, my pecs can stretch <laughs> I out. Mean, <laughs> I mean, it would work for me. I wouldn't be. I'd, I'd be like, sure. I'm like, yeah, hey, taking it go off. Go for it. Nesta's stare seared him from across the ring. Cassian might have flexed his stomach muscles as he approached the chalk-lined circle. As shook his head and muttered, Pathetic Cass. <laughs> but it's so, it's so cute. cute. They start circling each other and then Cass fakes out as and attempts a strike. Grappling ensues. Ooh. They go hard, but not hard enough to make real injuries. Each of them enjoying the process. As Cat Cass notes, they both have grins on their faces. Don't even put this in my brain. I can't think about the two of them grappling each other without shirts on. You know that what this does to me, Natalie. I mean, you're not the only one. Ness is also... Having some thoughts. Can you imagine? Like, I feel like the look on my face, like the entire time, I'd just be like either a huge smile or just like, ah, 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 like pure joy on my face. Like I would, ah, yes, yes, get each other. I, I could not. I would never. I already can't play anything cool anyway. But this scene, I just, I can't even. Oh my goodness. Well, in turn. They, after they pummel each other for a while, and again, this is like a playful for Illyrians fighting. Bats being bats. Bats are being bats. As wins the match with a fake-out look of horror at Nesta, as though something was wrong, which in turn takes Cass's attention away at long enough for As to punch him. <laughs> and so As wins... And then they're walking out of the ring, and Cassian notices Nesta looking a little flushed. Oh, yeah. And he teases her that she's drooling, which, <laughs> which only sets her temper. Whatever. He caught her in the act, so whatever. Yeah. That's a whatever. Because I, I love that also reaction of just like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I think it's cute too that he calls her on it. Yeah. Um, we cut over to the afternoon with Nesta in the library and she's asking Gwen about the Dread Trove because if you'll recall, there is more than Nesta and Cassian having sexual tension going on. Wait a second, there's other plots of this book? Yeah, there's because a whole catastrophic about it. world event happening. Not thinking about it. Nesta also seems disinterested in this as she recalls in this moment watching the two males go fist to fist in the ring earlier in the day, how oh. she had felt overwhelmed, yeah. had even begun considering what those powerful bodies would be like if they turned their attention to her. Boing, boing, <laughs> boing. Just my eyeballs just <gasps> squeezing out of my brain, bro. Then she sort of wickedly thinks about how Aline would faint to know that Nesta has had two males in her bed. Not, on, not once, but twice before. Damn. And loved every second of it. Damn. I see girl. All right, Nista. All right, yeah, Nista. all right. And if you've read the books, you know the next paragraph that's coming, the one that spawned one million fan art depictions. Nesta had made herself focus during the lesson. But as soon as she'd left them in the training ring, filthy thoughts had poured in, leaving her half distracted while she'd walked down to the library. The thought of Cassian pumping into her mouth <laughs> while Azriel pounded into her from behind <laughs> the two of them <laughs> working her in tandem. <laughs> Why am I twelve? <laughs> I'm 
sorry. I need you. I'm like, you're not I sorry. Be, Don't I lie to. to me. We had to bring it up. Don't lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> we had to bring it up. You had Come to on. bring it up, but I will say as my present, I am typing in Nesta Cassian Azriel. Of course, that's the first thing that pops up so that I can look at a couple of the pictures. Yes. Yeah. Put it in a mouth. In a motherfucking mouth. There's a lot of Patreon art. <laughs> There's as well. a lot. Oh, yeah, man. Just <laughs> let me dream. Good lord. The two of them. God, I just want to have sex with a bad boy. <laughs> Thank you. All okay. right. That was my present. All Thank right. you. For that was your me. gift. Thank They're you. Your for little treat do it. for doing an episode. Thank you. Nom, nom, nom. Um, right after, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's thinking about these things, and then she goes, oh, wait, catastrophic. I have to focus yeah, on the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got other things. I was crying. I don't know. Scrying, something. Scrying, scrying, scrying. Uh, so Nesta is asking Gwen if she's ever heard of the Dread Trove, and she has not. This isn't surprising to Nesta after what she's heard in the meeting that its magics helped it be glamoured enough that most people forgot about it, which, very scary. There's a weapon of mass destruction that you can't remember. That's scary. Yeah. I think that it doesn't want you to remember it for a reason, and I'd probably listen to that. I'm like, you know what? Maybe we maybe we don't. But, but again, that's why I'm not a warrior. Unfortunately, old young Brialen already knows. Yeah. And so now we gotta deal with that. Yeah. Because the actual plot again. This is the plot. The plot. The part. plot. Yeah. Um, so she keeps most of the details from Gwen that she learned from the meeting, but also acknowledges that in telling Gwen about the trove at all is defying Reese's orders. But she also doesn't care. Not because she wants to put them all at risk, but because I think in some part of her, she knows that Gwen will not only be discreet, but an important asset. Mm -hmm. So Gwen, for her part, seems enthralled and willing to help her research from the safety of the library, of course. Gwen's interest is piqued enough that Nesta decides to broach something else. You know, you could come train with me in the mornings. Oh, she's reaching out her hand. She is. Gwen is not interested, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gwen is like, no, 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 I can't. I don't, I don't leave here anymore. I don't need to wrestle. I mean, if the last time you left there was, you know, when you were brought in there, I probably want to stay in there, too. Oh, you sure. You know, it's like, let me just be protected inside of here. Ah, yeah. But Nesta pushes, maybe more than is appropriate, but that's just Nesta. Oh, she's just being a bitch. She tells Gwen that it's not necessary to want to become a warrior to train. I will say she's not being a bitch right now. She's just trying to... She's I being know she's a little pushy. She's just being a little pushy. But that's okay. Sometimes people need a little bit of push. Mm. And sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. But Babies out the vagina. They need a little push. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <laughs> Very oh, that's helpful. That's not funny. I just, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank nope. you for um, accepting me for who I am. I Natalie. accept you. <laughs> but she tells Gwen that it's not necessary to want to become a warrior to train. That exercise and breathing <laughs> practices are good. It can just be good. helpful. I be think relaxing. I think it's Nesta knowing that the breathing stuff and the work the endorphins that mm -hmm. she gets has really helped her but she doesn't know how to say that to Gwen um, but Gwen resists saying she doesn't need to be physically strong as an acolyte Nesta asks her if she's afraid of Cassian no she says she knows Cassian is a good male. Aha. Uh -huh. I drink five dozen eggs. Whoa. Sorry, I also was getting like very Gaston, Gaston mm. uh, like feelings from myself earlier when I was looking at myself in the mirror. I could see that, but like in a good way. Yeah. We don't obviously don't like a Gaston. No, we but don't. Very handsome. But like if if Gaston had like the you know, the personality of Cassian, yeah. we would be, I'd be all up in that. And actually, I love the look of the Cassian side shave. This is more yeah. of a rune to non, but, um, Oh my God. Uh, should I get a lip ring? You want me to get a lip, should I get a lip ring? I have I'll to say, don't, I, I would say no, just because I find a bottom lip ring very attractive. It's so hot. Um, just from my, my youth. <laughs> yeah, when you looked at pictures, because... The only man you know biblically is your husband. Right, right, right. When you would look at pictures of men, because you weren't allowed to, you'd have never spoken to another man. I, I know. I was, no, I no. just, I was in a library under a mountain. <laughs> Good. Oh, yeah, that I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
just, but however, just to her bringing up Cassian in this moment makes Nesta think of the night before. Oh, yeah. And wondering why he didn't make any indication of what they'd done that morning. So when they, like, you know, when he was playing cool in the training ring, now we're seeing her side of being like, I wonder why I didn't say anything. Wondering if he just wanted to repay the debt and be done with it. Wondering but, if he didn't like it as much as her. Oh, no, but then, like, isn't that, like, this is always the problem with playing it cool, which mm-hmm. is why I've learned in my age to just show how I feel at all times. Because when you're both playing it cool, then you're, like, good into the spiral inside of your brain of, like, wait, are we... Are you both playing it cool? Or am I, wait, am I playing it cool? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm done. I'm so to play done cool. with that shit. I'm so bad. I was. I'm not good at like feelings, mind games. Like no. I'm, I'm just so. I hate it. I wear all of my emotions on my sleeve, which is annoying at times. Yeah, I also don't like to have harbored like resentment for things. I'm just like, just tell me. Let's just say, let's get it done with. I don't want to fucking do this dance. Just tell me what it is. Yes, let's get it out. It unsettled her that she spent so much time thinking about it. Girl, just be like, you don't have a screen to look at waiting for text messages to pop up. Dot, dot, dots. Just thinking, if there was dot, dot, dots when I was a teenager, Mm. I, I, my mind would have been lost because of how often I would just stare at the screen. Waiting. Waiting. Like putting it down and then picking it up. And just staring at it, staring at it, staring at it. Put it down and then you're just like... I can't, I'm not gonna look at it. I'm not gonna look at it. But then, like, oh, Lord knows if you saw the three dots. Oh, oh Harbinger my God. of evil. I know. Those three dots. She returns her focus back to Gwen and realizes that she looks shamed by Nesta pushing her and Gwen denying it. Like, she just, she realizes she's kind of embarrassing Gwen. Nesta's heart drops and she lets the subject go for now. She leaves Gwen, but spends the rest of the afternoon agonizing over the conversation she had with her, wondering if it gave Gwen something to consider or if she had just embarrassed her. When she checks the sign-up sheet as she's leaving for the day, no names have been added. With her thoughts swarming, she heads directly to the stairwell to go down, down, down. She uses the motion, the stepping down, to dissect her talk with Gwen. We as the reader don't fully know why yet, but she's trying to pull some pieces of valuable information from what they discussed. Nesta was on step 2000 when she halted. She knew what she had to do. She has to start up an MLM and get each of the priestesses to invite one other priestess into their downline. Yeah, She's gonna make money! Maybe it's gonna be Tupperware. <laughs> Maybe it's gonna be baskets. Jewelry. Or um, jewelry, yeah. Mm, I was thinking bas- longer burger baskets. Longer burgers. Um, but that's just because I'm trapped in the um, prison of always thinking about longer burger baskets. You do think about them a lot. <laughs> um, fairly often. Um, but I, you know what, man... I'd love to be invited to a Tupperware party. You know, there's a whole t- a whole MLM for pearls. So I bet Amarin would love that. Oh one. my God, send Amarin there. I wouldn't. I'd be like, what do you want? Your pearl party. Uh, just, whoa. <laughs> it's not as fun it's as it not, sounds, everybody. It's not as fun as a pearl necklace party. Come on, guys. Oh, come on, guys. Sorry. My head's in the gutter. I wonder why. Yeah, Natalie. a party where everybody just gets comb on just their chest. Just all over cool. their chest. What a fun yeah, time. Just come on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we really need to organize a party think, to do that. I don't think I want to go to that party. I think I'm sick. This like, is a I very think I can't. silly episode. We only got through, I think we only got to chapter 24 because well, we talked so much. I'm sorry, everybody. And I just, well, because these, this is like what we've been waiting for. We have to talk about it. I'm in my feelings. Yes, I need to feel this. Like, I agonized up until this point, and then this happened, and it was just floodgates, dams bursting. Well, I'm just, don't, I don't need to know about your bedroom. I, it's, oh, 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 you, it's too late, Natalie. It's too late. Dams bursting. I'm going to make, I'm just going to have Jeff, I'm like, just open the door slowly and just go, there he was. <laughs> just look him up and down. As Dressed as Cassian. As Cassian, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think he'll get, I think he'll get past it. 